think I can fairly safely say we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> because, yeah, also would get the blowback. <laughs> um, and also, I do apologise, Claire, I am going to crack out Orange Guy, and I'm sorry he doesn't look more like Sonny Bill Williams. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> Orange by straight off the bat. So in New Zealand, we have actually made it easier to enrol and vote than in almost any other country in the world. You can enrol without proof of identity. You can vote without proof of identity. You can rock up to any voting place anywhere in the country up to two and a half weeks ahead of election day, and no matter who you are, you can cast a vote. Now, I don't think there are any other countries that make it as easy as we do. Pretty close. People are kind of going, <laughs> We have enrolment teams at community events, at festivals, helping people get on the roll. We have teams going into secondary schools, helping final year students get enrolled and ready to vote. We have teams working with ethnic communities nationwide. Now, I'm not saying we're perfect. There are always going to be some who slip through the cracks or find it a challenge. But overall, on that front, we're actually doing OK but participation rates are still declining. So the Electoral Commission is looking at what we can do to increase participation and motivation. It is a new area for us. We don't have the answers yet, which is why we're here today, to hear from those who do have experience in this area, who are already successfully working with those who we deem hard to reach, those who have international experience and who can help us place how we're doing in an international context. But there are some things that we do already know. We research after each election and people, both voters and non-voters, do know how, how, when and where to vote. So if it's not actually about the logistics of enrolling and voting, what is it that's getting in the way? So we ask. After each election, we ask non-voters why they didn't participate, and here's what they tell us. They had other priorities. They had to work on the day. They're just not interested in politics. They can't be bothered. They couldn't figure out who to vote for, and they thought that their vote wouldn't matter. Now, how many of these issues can the Electoral Commission fix on its own? To be honest, hardly any, any even. So we're going to talk about my car for a minute. You could teach me how to change a head gasket. You could give me brochures about changing a head gasket. You could play me videos. You could knock on my door. You could involve me in conversations on social media. And you could, you could just absolutely convince me of the wonders of changing my head gasket. But unless I need to change my head gasket, or check that it's OK, or even actually know what it is, it's not going to be relevant, and I'm probably not going to engage. That's a head gasket. That actually didn't help me in the slightest either. <laughs> it's a car thing, there we go. So what we can tell from our own and from others' work, it's actually the same for voting. If people aren't ready, wanting, and receptive to the information, they're just not going to hear it. We can provide all the information, resources, and support around the act of enrolling and voting in a multitude of formats, languages, accessibility, everything under the sun. But the impetus to vote is a personal decision. The motivation to vote needs to come from the individual. And so who plays a part in creating that motivation? Everyone. Everyone here on the panel with me today, everyone in the room here, and all of us within our communities, non-voters need a reason to participate. Should the Electoral Commission be encouraging participation? It's a question raised by the chair of the session when we asked him to join us for this conference, although it was a little more, you want me to what? You're doing what? <laughs> and it's a valid question. Is it us? Can we, or should we, be the provider of information that will address the reasons people give for not voting? And so that's what we're here to discuss today. Whose role is it? What part do we all play? And who can motivate voters? We may not yet have the solutions, but if we can't ask the questions, who can? Should we be promoting participation? Of course. One of our statutory roles is to facilitate participation in parliamentary democracy. But we think that truly facilitating participation takes more than going, oh, it's over there, grab it if you want it. 
If that was all it took, we wouldn't have a problem and we wouldn't be here today. We think declining voter participation is a major problem and we're putting our hands up to be a part of the solution, but we cannot do it alone. So that's my challenge to everyone here today. What are we going to do collectively to turn this around? Thanks.